Let's talk Jalen Smith's future. I've seen a lot of tweets about him in the past few days. And, I mean, they're not really speculative. I just see his name come up a bunch. It's a really interesting situation because DeAndre Aiden's really emerged into a great player. So what's the usefulness of Jalen Smith having him on the roster? Can he play alongside DA? And, I mean, <laughs> you might be thinking that because earlier this season, me and a lot of the other people that I respect in the Suns community were saying that Jalen Smith is only a five and can only play the center position and the Suns were you know, handling him improperly for the good first half of the season, and he should have been playing at the five instead of the four. But now looking at the situation, I think he's a four or a five. I think that's where his versatility comes in. You know, you can bring him to that starting lineup to try to, you know, slow down teams like the Lakers and, you know, the Bucks and have him on the court with D.A., but you're gonna have him operate primarily as a backup five. And I understand drafting pick number 10, you're not exactly wanting a backup center as your top pick right there. But I think the Suns, I mean, it still really works. Another thing with Jalen Smith is just, um, he's, I don't know when he's gonna be on the court playing serious minutes. And. A lot of it has to deal with the fact that he's not going through a traditional growth curve. Monty and Jalen Smith have came up with a plan to shape him as a new age big man slash wing who's really well rounded. And his curve is very interesting. If he's going to be a superstar player, uh, it's going to be if he's on the court playing significant minutes in the next season. If he's going to be a pretty great draft pick, just a solid player in the NBA, we're going to see him on the court in his third and fourth seasons playing significant minutes. It's just how they're choosing to build him up. And it's because he has the ability to be a traditional big man and set screens and be a big body and protect the rim a little bit. But he also has the ability to shoot the three ball. He can drive to the rim off the dribble. He can pass the ball. He's extremely high IQ. He's got insane quickness, and he's got some hops as well. It's He just has a really interesting combination of talents. I just don't know if he's going to have the opportunity to show them if the Suns team is prioritizing winning and prioritizing players like Dario Saric and DeAndre Aiden, who are already locked up long term. Dario Saric is guaranteed to be on this roster for the next two seasons after this, unless he gets traded. DeAndre Aiden, we know he's getting re-signed to a massive contract, so there's not that much opportunity for Jalen Smith, especially since they got some pretty nice wings who are going to probably stick around if I had to guess. Jay Crowder, Cam Johnson, and Torrey Craig. It's just, it's not a great situation for Jalen Smith to be in. And uh, yeah, I think that's when I can understand that drafting a different player does make a lot of sense. Especially guys like Tyrese Halliburton, who really been balling out this season. But I still see value in his career. I still see this ginormous upside if he can figure it out and put it all together. Put all these different facets of his game together to get on the court and really start playing well. Uh, I, I, got a, I got a lot more to say, but maybe scroll down and click subscribe. It's pretty easy to do. Anyways... Jalen Smith, uh, I would say people who are judging him right now. First of all, the, the the fact that he played in the G League, I mean, first of all, if you think playing in the G League is a bad thing, then I know for a fact you haven't watched Ty, Ty Jerome, you haven't watched Alexei Pokashevsky, you haven't watched Malachi Flynn, and those are only examples of this season's players in the G League who have taken really, really big leaps coming out of the G League. And... Well, just big leaps comparatively to how they were playing before going to the G League. And Jalen Smith, I, I just don't see it as a negative because he just doesn't have a place in the rotation. Seems just been really good. I mean, like Frank Kaminsky is barely even playing most of the time. And Kaminsky is a nice player when he's on the court. Kind of. And it's just like, yeah, he just wasn't built for this rotation. This rotation wasn't built for the success of Jalen Smith. Which you might be thinking, why were they doing that? If they had the number 10 pick, why did they not build this rotation for him to succeed? 
I, I actually can't really understand the logic of that too much. And then there's uh, people judging him based on when he's playing in garbage time. Well, if you've played basketball, you've probably played in garbage time. And if you played in garbage time, you know you're not playing for winning, and you're not you're not contributing to winning. The game is already decided once you step on the court when you're playing in garbage time. Players don't play as hard. Well, I mean, there's some killer mentality players who will go off in garbage time, but there's other players who, you know, it's just demoralizing to play in garbage time, and they just don't feel like they need to put in as much as much effort. You can still be a high character player and a high drive and a high work ethic player even though you're not you know pumped up to play in garbage time I, I think that should be pretty understandable so the fact that he hasn't found his rhythm it, it makes sense he's only played like two or three games of significant minutes in garbage time and it, it just makes a lot of sense he does not go into rhythm because first of all he's not playing winning basketball second of all he's not playing with the main unit and the best players and, you know, these units are untested. These lineups are untested. And third, it's just... It's just not... All these factors do not contribute to him playing winning basketball. And I'm looking at this Jazz lineup because the Suns game is about to start. They're starting four forwards. It's kind of ridiculous, Jazz. Anyways. No, it's just... Jalen Smith is not setting up... Is not being set up to be successful... Nor do I think there's a scenario in which you set him up to be successful for at least the next few years. Just because, you know, he has a lot of skills that are raw and he's really working on developing. And that's when I can see, like, the real legitimate criticism of Jalen Smith is that he's he just might not figure it out. And he might not, you know, you know figure out how to put this all together and you know, turn into a great player, a substantial player even. Um, it's, that's understandable. If he can't fix, figure it out, then I don't know. But I think he's the type of char- the type of guy, he's high character, he's high work ethic, he's everything basketball. If he continues working, and he, he can break out next season, he can break out in the next two seasons, it's going to have to be a leap, you know? It's not going to come... It's gonna. Not, it's not gonna come slowly. He's gonna have to figure it out. And some players don't do it. I think there's a high chance that Jalen Smith does figure it out. His future with the team. He's a. I don't know. He's just a weapon. You know, he's a weapon at either the four or the five. You have unique sets for him because he's that type of talent player. And another thing about him, which you're going to hear me bring up a lot come draft time when I'm talking about Evan Mobley, is that you can't just slot him in, slot him in at the five because he has a lot of talented stuff that's just not implemented for centers, like ball handling and scoring off the dribble and shooting the three. Just a lot of systems don't have that for the, power, for the center. And that's when you slide him to the four is giving him those opportunities to score on the ball. It's just, you don't usually put your center face up at the three-point line. And, you know, that's when I think Jalen Smith should be playing the four. And I think my argument earlier this season that he should only be playing the five is, you know, it's kind of changed. I've changed my mind on that opinion. And, yeah, I think maybe that was what I was thinking right when he got drafted is just, I don't know if he's ever going to be, a, you know, a starting caliber guy. And I know I've said differently um, dur- during the season. I've said, oh, yeah, this guy could be the starting five. But then DeAndre Aiden really turned it on. But, yeah, Jalen Smith, he can be a weapon at the four, whether you want to play him with DA, or at the five on the bench. And uh, I think he can still get quite a few minutes. I think he can average a good 30, you know, 27 to 30 minutes a game playing at the four and the five. He's got that type of talent. Uh, he can find minutes, you know, once he breaks out. And, you know, I mean, I think there's a lot of value in that. I think, you know, Jalen Smith can be a good player, but I, I really understand the criticisms of not drafting a Tyrese Halliburton. It's specifically Tyrese. It's just... 
it was, it's a bit puzzling. I mean, it makes sense all the time that the Suns should look big, man. They just didn't have a lot of bigs going on. There's no guarantee they were going to re-sign Dario Sarge. And, yeah, I mean, the big man rotation was DeAndre Aiden and, and no one. So it made sense to draft Jalen Smith. And then, you know, they re-signed Dario and Frank Kaminsky's been playing pretty decent. It's just like... I don't know if I can really blame them for drafting him, because they had a big man need. And there wasn't any guarantee that DeAndre Aiden was going to figure things out, because he has figured things out. Uh, but at the time, there was no guarantee that it was going to happen. And, you know, drafting an insurance plan at number 10, that's when I can find things most understandable. But point guard, just looking at their point guard rotation, uh, Javon Carter is not your long-term option at point guard, I don't think. And uh, campaign <laughs> definitely isn't either. So, yeah, I, it's a bit puzzling still. Tyrese Halliburton, I mean, Jalen Smith does make a lot of sense. He can be a useful weapon, but it's just hard to imagine he's much other than playing off of the bench. He can still be a useful piece off of the bench, but it's still a bit puzzling that they selected him over Tyrese Halliburton. I'm still going to support them in the draft pick, but, you know, Tyrese Halliburton, I'm going to say it, I was stuck on Jalen Smith. I thought Jalen Smith looked really good, but, you know, in retrospective, Tyrese Halliburton just made a lot of sense, and, you know, that they didn't draft him, and... Uh, it's all set in stone now. We can't change it. They, they have Jalen Smith. The Kings have Tyrese Halliburton. And you just got to live with it. And you live with Jalen Smith. And I think he's going to be a, a really good player one day. And a lot of people are not going to be kicking themselves because we don't bring up stuff from the past about people calling players trash. But, you know, they're going to be looking at it and they're just, they might be thinking in the back of their head, oh, shoot, I was really wrong about Jalen Smith. You know, I think that's very posi possible in the future. Anyways, I'm going to post this at halftime. Maybe I'll watch it then. Maybe you'll watch it after the Suns game. I don't know. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Uh, maybe click like, maybe click subscribe. I don't know. Uh, goodbye.